Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. And I apologize if I sound weird. Some way, somehow, even though the weather's been beautiful, I'm starting to come down with something and it's just super annoying. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Instead, we're here to talk about some Blu-rays that I've picked up off of eBay recently. Some of these I picked up, man, as long as a few months ago. Some of them just arrived in the mail yesterday. So I have a whole stack of DVDs to share with you guys also, but I figured today we would just stick to the Blu-rays and then next time out, I'll show you the DVDs. And also, this doesn't include any double dips that I've done. I still have that video I have to put together, but I haven't done that yet. But anyway, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to my recent eBay Blu-ray haul. All right, so let's start off with kind of an interesting one simply because of what I've done here. So I'm going to shout out Huck over at Huck's Movie Channel. He does his famous Huckstomizations where he basically mixes in uh, the DVDs with the Blu-rays or the 4K, whatever the case might be. Because of his inspiration, I decided to do that with my version of... Chicago. So I realized that I only had Chicago. Let me, let me take this off here for a second. There, a little less glare. So I only had Chicago in the Razzle Dazzle DVD edition. I didn't have it on Blu-ray. So I ordered the Blu-ray off of Amazon, but the Blu-ray does not have nearly as many special features as the Razzle Dazzle edition does. I assumed it would be, you know, equivalent because this is the Diamond edition, but that's not the case. So what I did was, well, first off, I customized the slip cover from the DVD. So you can see it is cut off a little bit there versus, you know, seeing their whole legs. And on the back as well, you can kind of see where it was cut off down at the bottom. But I decided to use this uh, slip cover and put it on the Blu-ray. So on the inside here, you can see we have the Diamond Edition Blu-ray, which has a DVD with it. But then we also have the Razzle Dazzle Edition DVD, which is actually two DVDs. So this is now a four disc set. And you can see on the inside, I have the DVD artwork put in there. You can see that's the, the front of the DVD art, but there it lists all the special features. So this way I know what special features are included on all four discs. So that's what I did. Again, a shout out to Huck. This is exactly what he actually, after I did this one, he did one with Chicago. If I'm not mistaken, I think he did one with Chicago as well. I don't know that it was exactly the same thing I ended up doing here. He might've had different editions, but yeah, either way, this movie's amazing. Like this was the first time I ever went to the theater and could sing the songs before I actually saw the movie because my buddies and I would listen to this all the time. I was a, a theater guy in high school, so a huge nerd. And we used to listen to the Chicago soundtrack all the time after it came out. So by the time it actually got to theaters, we knew all the songs and loved it. Of course, I didn't sing along in the theater. I'm not that annoying, but yeah, just a great movie. So anyway, long one here, but I, I customized my version of Chicago to make it the best edition of it that I could. Hopefully I will do more of these in the future. I have a small list of other ones that I know I can combine. Alexander, I'm looking at you. That's like a seven disc set I can put together, but Anyway, that is Chicago. So it's a mixture of the Razzle Dazzle Edition, which I already owned, and then the Diamond Edition, which is the one I purchased off of eBay. Next up is one that you would have seen if you watched one of my recent I Watched 3 vlogs. This is The Adventures of Robin Hood, the Arrow Flynn version. So I've heard really great things about this. I watched The Sword of Sherwood Forest for my uh, first I Watched 3 vlog of the year. I really enjoyed it. And so because of that, I decided to check this one out. And Neil mentioned in the comments on that vlog that, hey, if you didn't love the sword fights in Sword of Sherwood Forest, you're going to love them in this. So I am really looking forward to checking this one out. I've not gotten around to it yet, but definitely will soon. So we have Arrow Flynn's The Adventures of Robin Hood. So I'm going to blame these next two pickups on Damn Fool Idealistic Crusade, an awesome channel, super into like the details of the discs and what audio tracks are available, how's the, the picture look and things like that. So if you're into that, definitely check him out. But in one of his best of the year videos, it may have been 2021 or 2022, I don't remember exactly, he uh, called out a couple of these Warner Archive collection releases. 
He's a huge fan of that uh, publishing line. So I figured I would give both of these a shot because they sounded pretty interesting and I found them for really good prices. So the first one here is one that I think he said was his favorite uh, prison film of all time. This is Each Dawn I Die. And we have James Cagney and George Raft in here. And this is actually based on a novel by Jerome Odlum, who I don't recognize. I'm trying to see who directed this one. There it is. William Keegley directs this. So I don't know too much about it, but it's a, it's a prison film and it's supposed to be excellent. I think I got this for under $10. So I figured I would give it a shot and see if I enjoy it or not. So yeah, really looking forward to checking this one out. I have not watched any James Cagney, at least not that I am aware of. So very excited to check out Each Dawn I Die. This next one is a horror film from Warner Archive, and it's one that he praised heavily. This is Dr. X, and it's a Michael Curtis horror film. And the reason I wanted to check this one out is because he was praising one of the audio commentary tracks. I believe it was this one on here. And it's done by Alan K. Road and Scott McQueen. So I'm very interested to see what that one is all about. You guys know, if you watch the channel, I am not much for audio commentary tracks. However... Watching Damn Fool Idealistic Crusade, he does a wonderful job of kind of selling you on the idea that these are like the best special features you can get when they're done well. So I'm curious to see what I'll think of an audio commentary track that is so highly regarded. So that's why I wanted to check this one out. Now, this release is a little bit annoying. Not the release. This purchase is a little bit annoying. I got this from eBay, as all of these. But you can see on the top there, you see that white? I don't know what it is, but when you open it up, it looks as if the, yeah, like it's coming apart. It looks like the original cover art was water damaged. And so then they put that white piece of paper on the back to stabilize it a little bit. I don't know, but that was not in the description at all. So that's super annoying, but I mean, whatever. The contents on the disc are to going to be totally fine. So yeah, that's the only like negative I think I have from the eBay purchases in this video at least. So anyway, Dr. X from the Warner Archive collection is now in my collection. So, you know, as I was going through these, it hit me that I thought there was one more movie that I picked up because of Damn Fool Idealistic Crusade. Turns out there was. I actually uh, had to go grab it. It was over in the stack that I'm going to show you guys for all of the new items I bought in May. But I decided, you know what, even though I technically bought this one brand new from, I think I got this one off Amazon because it was really cheap. I'm going to show it in this video anyway, because it's all part of the, the same idea, same video. So this is called Mad Love. And this looks fascinating. I think this is one that he referenced as one of his favorite horror movies ever. And it stars Peter Lorre. I love Peter Lorre from M, which is on the Criterion Collection. One of the first Criterion Collection movies I think I ever watched. And I love that movie. It's brilliant. Peter Lorre is phenomenal. Because of that, I had to check this one out. And this was one that I think all three of these uh, from the Warner Archive were not available streaming. And so in order to watch them, I figured this would be the way to do it. So... Yeah, very interested to see if this one is any good. Directed by Carl Frond. Uh, it says on the back here, one of the most fantastic horror numbers ever presented. So, yeah, we will see if this is enjoyable. I'm hoping it is. Hopefully, I will kind of be on the same wavelength as Damn Fool Idealistic Crusade, but we will see. So, even though this is not an eBay purchase and it's a new item, I'm going to include it here because it falls in line with the Warner Archive. So, this is Mad Love. This is my most recent pickup as it just arrived on my doorstep yesterday, but I mentioned this movie when I was talking about Rocky the other day in one of my blind spot videos. And I'm, you know, trying to figure out how out of all the nominees from 1976, how Rocky was the one that ended up as the winner. But uh, in there, I talk about how I watched Network back in high school, but I don't really remember it. So I figured, you know what? I need to correct that and check it out again now that I've seen Rocky. And of course, I remember Taxi Driver well and All the President's Men. But one of them that I hadn't seen uh, recently was Network. And so I wanted to grab this one on Blu-ray again just to give it another watch. And it's one, frankly, that just should be in the collection because it is a classic by all accounts. So yeah, really looking forward to checking this out again. And what's really cool is there is a I don't know if you'll be able to see it there, but it's a six part documentary is included on this Blu-ray. So lots of special features, which is always awesome to see. The other nominee from 1976 for Best Picture is Bound for Glory. 
Not one I've seen yet, but you might see that in my DVD haul video when I do that one. But anyway, Network is in the collection, so I cannot wait to revisit this one and see if it's as good as I remember it being. I'll shout out John over at PlatX2 here for this one because I'm fairly certain he was the one that uh, talked about this in one of his videos. Mind you, it was probably like two or three months ago now and it's just been sitting here ever since, but I had to grab it for my uh, Joaquin Phoenix collection. This is Come On, Come On. And it actually also stars Woody Norman as the little boy here. He plays Joaquin Phoenix's nephew in this. Woody Norman is awesome. He was in uh, Last Voyage of the Demeter, which I watched at the beginning of this year, which I thought was a lot better than people give it credit for. But he was also in Cobweb, one of my favorite movies that I watched in 2023. I love that horror film. So he's excellent. Joaquin Phoenix is one of my favorite actors of all time. I had to have this in the collection here. So this is going to be a drama. I think it's about the uh, relationship between Joaquin Phoenix and his character and uh, Woody Norman's character who plays his uh, nephew. So very intrigued to see this one. And uh, John, let me know down below if I'm completely making this up, if this wasn't one of yours, but I'm fairly certain that's how I heard about this one. So yeah, looking forward to checking out. Come on, come on. It recently came to my attention that there was another Chronicles of Riddick movie that I didn't have in my collection. So instead of just buying that movie separately, I decided to go with this whole complete collection here because it comes with some other things as well. So this is the Riddick complete collection. So you have the uh, director's cut of Pitch Black and Chronicles of Riddick, plus the movie I didn't have, which is Riddick. On top of that, you also get The Dark Fury, which I believe is an animated movie. Now, after I bought this, I was looking through my uh, collections that I already had or the movies that I already had in this series, and I think everything I had was already on there other than Riddick, so I probably could have just bought uh, Riddick by itself, but uh, oh well. I now have these all in one set, so I was able to get rid of like one or two separate ones. I do have... I think it's pitch black, right? On 4K from Arrow. Obviously, I'm holding on to that one, but everything else I was able to get rid of. So that this is a space saver, if nothing else. But I, and I'll admit, if you want, you know, proof of this, you go back to one of our old podcasts where we talked about this series. I'm not the biggest fan of this series. However, I did want to revisit this and I want to watch the, the latest film, which is Riddick. I definitely wanted to check that one out. But of course, I'll watch Pitch Black on the 4K release, but then I will use this to watch everything else. So I remember really loving the video game that came out for The Chronicles of Riddick. Let me know down below if you played that. Really good first-person shooter. But anyway, this here is the Riddick Complete Collection. So last but not least here, I will shout out another YouTuber again. I want to call out Ken over at Mid-Level Media because he pointed out one of these as being his favorite underrated sci-fi film, and it's directed by Robert Zemeckis, which I think is safe to say is at least one of, if not his favorite director. But I'm talking about Contact with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey. This is a movie that I don't believe is streaming anywhere, at least as of filming, and I didn't have it on DVD, so I really wanted to grab the Blu-ray. I decided to go with this triple feature because one, the price was right, and two, it also has 2010, The Year We Made Contact. Now, I be from how I understand it, that is the sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey, which I've talked about here recently as one that I've just recently watched. And though I didn't love it, I respect it a ton, and I definitely want to check out the 2010 here. So, And then the third movie on here is Red Planet. That's a sci-fi film that I own a uh, standalone of behind me, but I have not seen this one, at least that I recall. When I go to watch it, maybe I'll remember it and, I, and remember that I have seen it, but I don't think that I have. So yeah, really looking forward to checking this one out. I, it's, you know, it looks like a really cool set and the price was really good. I, they, I made an offer and they gave me a really good deal on it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the, uh, it is cracked right there. So hopefully one of the, uh, my sister gave me a whole bunch of old Blu-ray cases. So maybe one of those has a, a triple feature pack in it so I can replace this with. But anyway, we have Red Planet. 2010 and contact for the last item I picked up on Blu-ray from eBay recently. All right, so there is my relatively small stack of Blu-rays that I've picked up from eBay recently. So like I said, I have a whole nother pile over there of DVDs that I will share with you guys, and then a whole bunch of double dips, which 99% of which are from eBay as well. So tons of eBay finds recently, but let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the pile I shared today? 
What movie do you think I need to put at the very top of the pile? Is Come On, Come On excellent because it looks awesome? What about Contact? Do you agree? Is it super underrated? Let me know what your thoughts are on those and anything down in the comments. I appreciate all comments down there. Before you do go, if you could hit that like button also, that would really help me out. But with that said, guys, thank you so much for checking this video out. Before you go, I'll just encourage you all, as always, to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.